Road movies have been popular since, well, since about forever, and thanks to movies like Bonnie and Clyde, the outlaw road movie was a particular favorite of exploitation filmmakers. These films typically involve fleeing from law enforcement and involve quite a lot of sex and violence, so they're a perfect fit for the drive-in audience. And I've covered some of them on the channel before, like the fantastic Roger Corman production Big Bad Mama with Angie Dickinson, and Bobby Joe and the Outlaw, which is notable for being the only Linda Carter film where she gets out her Wonder Womans. <laughs> Welcome to Exploitation Reviews, and me, Rob, and today I'm taking a look at The Great Texas Dynamite Chase from 1976, starring Playboy Playmate Claudia Jennings. She's been on the channel a few times before, I'm sure she'll be on the channel a few times more, but let's see what she's up to this time. We open on Claudia Jennings, here, she's Candy, running across a field, escaping from prison. She meets up with a friend, maybe a sister, and then changes in the bushes. Yeah, it was the 70s, they had those back then. She asks her friend to hitch home so she can take the car to get the money. How will she get the money? Eh, she'll figure something out. Then we hop over to a different woman, in bed. That's Jocelyn Jones. You might recognize her from The Tourist Trap. Here, she's Ellie Joe. A phone call reminds her that she's late for work, she shows up at the bank, and Candy pulls up. Our two stories are coming together. It's a rare event, but nice when it happens. Ellie Joe is about to get fired when Candy busts into the bank with a stick of dynamite. And our newly fired bank teller is happy to help her rob the bank. The cops show up. Yeah, so they're not much help. Candy returns home and drops the money off. It turns out this money was to save the family homestead. Since she just escaped from prison, I'm not entirely sure why her homestead isn't surrounded by cops waiting for her to show up there, but it's probably best not to think too hard about things like that. Ellie Jo, meanwhile, is leaving town, but her ride gets a little handsy. Candy is leaving town too, and for the second time in 30 minutes, our two stories are coming together. <laughs> they don't even look out of breath. Candy tries to drop Ellie Joe off at the next town, but Ellie Joe suggests that instead they rob banks together, which is what they do. But the first time doesn't go very well. Where'd you get that honky dynamite, man? Honky dynamite? Hey now, that word's offensive to people who identify as geese. But they do manage to escape, and they blow up another cop car in the process. So they will need some more reliable dynamite, but they don't have a permit to buy some dynamite. But again, maybe they can work out some sort of trade. That's an interesting trade. She gets a box of dynamite for making him explode. Let's rob some banks. The third time's a charm, but then they get pulled over by this dirty cop. But our girls ain't helpless. Hey! Hey, that's no joke! Needing a little more spending money, they rob a grocery store and take a hostage. He doesn't seem to mind. They stay at a hotel and Ellie Joe puts the moves on him, and he still doesn't seem to mind. Would you? And it's nice that the girls take turns with the various boy toys that they run across. They were raised right. But they can't stay in the hotel for long, the cops are hot on their tail. The cops bust in and just start blasting, and it's pretty weird that what passes for comedy back in the 1970s here in the 2020s passes for reality. But anyway, the girls get away and continue their crime spree, this time with a new technique of using this fake hostage, and it works pretty well. But this is an outlaw road movie, and if you've seen enough of those, you know they don't normally have a happily ever after kind of ending, but that's enough out of me as far as plot goes, let's talk some highlights. Well, as you can probably tell from the clips I've shown, the two leading ladies here are what's known in the business as hotties. So if a movie about two badass outlaw total hotties sounds like your kind of thing, this movie is your kind of thing. It's light, it's fun, it's sexy, Claudia Jennings and Jocelyn Jones are great. There have been a number of Playboy Playmates who have turned actress over the years. Most of them are pretty terrible. But not Claudia Jennings. She's not. Meryl Streep, but she's also not bad. It's unfortunate that we lost her so young. Sadly, she died in a car accident at the age of 29. Overall, this film delivers pretty much everything you're going to want out of a 1970s drive-in flick. It's fast-paced, it's charming, it's violent, it's got two hot leads who are comfortable with shower scenes, and the whole thing is over and done with in 90 minutes. Not much to complain about, really. 
But I still wouldn't say the movie is perfect, like a hostage forced to join his captors in the bridal suite. This film has some shortcomings. Well, this is a very low-budget affair, and where this low-budget really is quite apparent is during these car chase scenes. They really are rather poorly done. They clearly didn't have any money for professional stunt drivers. But then again, like I said, pretty low budget, so it's hard to complain too much about that. What I can complain about are some of the story elements that didn't really make a whole lot of sense. Our gals rob a few banks, and it looks like they have a considerable amount of money, but then near the end of the film, they're out of money and need to rob more. Where did all that money go? They do end up with a rather nice car, so I assume they spend it all on that, but one, it would be pretty stupid to spend all the money on a car, and two, why wouldn't they just steal the car? The movie didn't make any of this at all clear, and I was a little confused. But that confusion didn't bother me too much, because ultimately I was happy they didn't spend any of their money on bras. 